Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door. And join me for a quick one this morning. I want to talk about VAR and I know we love to talk about VAR, but it feels like we've reached a new point in the VAR evolution, devolution, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, particularly in the wake of last night's um, game between Spurs and Liverpool. Now, I want your opinions, but let's just park to one side any conspiracy theories and issues about your team. And also, let's park the idea about get rid of it, scrap it. Ain't going to happen. What I want to hear about is its implementation going forward for all clubs. Because it feels like we've now moved... After the bedding in period, and let's be fair, a lot of that was just us as fans getting used to it and not liking change. It felt like we were moving in the right direction this season. Okay, in the first years, things taking too long, that was an issue. But fine, everyone deserves time to sort things out. Um, and the monitor being added to the side of the screen and rest being asked to go and have a look. All of that stuff. There's been some good improvements. I think we reached a low last season with this pedantic, awful implementation where every contact was shown in super slow motion and then made into a foul. Every foul was then made into a yellow card and every bad tackle, remotely bad tackle, was then made into a red card. Every, you know, every indication of a ball going anywhere near an arm was a handball. Penalties being handed out willy-nilly and uh, frankly we know a penalty is a 0.77 chance of scoring a goal and it felt like the game was really going in a poor direction where it was who can game the VAR to get themselves penalties to score penalties to win games which is not what anyone wanted to see. So we go to the Euros and widespread praise and this lighter touch, whatever that means. And I wonder, has the lighter touch gone too far now? Yes, in the Euros, it was moving a lot quicker. And look, I think there's often a case of the grass being greener and we see the European refs and we just think, oh, aren't these guys great? Can we have them over here? Maybe some truth in that, but hey, who knows? This season now, and particularly, look, I'm, t I'm talking, I'm a bit irked after a bad weekend for VAR, but... Have we now gone too far the other way where we're so eager to not undermine the ref and jump through this clear and obvious hoop that we're getting wrong decisions? And let's be quite plain about this. VAR is here to stay and it's here to help referees and make right decisions. That's the most important thing. If we're not getting the right decisions and it's not helping referees, what is the point? It's That's what it's there for. And I, for one, do believe that referees need help. I think players are very, very clever, very, very fit, and things are going on, and they just can't keep up. And I have no issue whatsoever with the fact a ref might miss something, and we might need to draw his attention to it after the fact. That's fine. Um, but what we seem to be getting now is... Um, that they're actually not diving in and and this clear and obvious thing is, is a problem to me. So take the Harry Kane and Andy Robertson thing where I think most football fans would um, sort of conclude that if one went off, the other should have gone off and if one stayed, the other should have stayed. I know they're two different, um, different tackles but it felt like there was an inconsistency and it felt like there was an inconsistency with the way it was dealt with. So Robertson, um, in that instance, referee Tierney was referred to the screen. Harry Kane, the yellow card came out and he wasn't referred to the screen. And I guess someone terrified at Stockley Parks going, oh, well, you could in some instance argue that he wasn't in danger in the opponent or was it not quite excessive force? So does that mean it's not exactly... A clear and obvious error, so we shouldn't send him over. Look, I don't like being undermined. Nobody likes being undermined. But, come on, referees must be very, very thick-skinned individuals with all of the criticism um, they get. And I think there's a point where, where referees should be sent to the screen and there's an issue there 
in itself in that they should be sent to the screen and to be able to go, no, I'm happy with my decision. Because all the commentators say it, don't they? Oh, he's going to the screen. That means he's going to change the decision. So it almost feels like um, the screen could be used a little bit more. And I hope I'm not contradicting what I've just said about things being... Um, things being moving faster and that being an improvement, fine. Yes, I don't want the game stopping and the ref going to the screen all the time. But it feels like the clear and obvious thing has has got to go now. We've just got to get the right decisions. Um, it, t take it out. I, you know, People fixate on clear and obvious and it seems fairly clear and obvious that Stockley Park are fixated on clear and obvious. And um, yes, we want to see the game refereed well and by the referee in the main on the pitch but come on that's just not possible is it so um i suspect what i'm saying here is we have gone too far the other way we've gone from complete pedantry to uh, well another type of complete pedantry where we're taking the term clear and obvious far far too literally and i don't know what you change it for um maybe it just needs to be um well Look, whatever clever wording, um, whatever I say, someone's going to come up with, um, and I've not thought about this for long enough, evidently, someone's going to come up with a, with a reason why that couldn't be. And, you know, oh, if this error was challenged, then why wasn't that error challenged? But they need to, I think, come up with a wording that appears to be more helpful for the referees. Anyway, that's my two penneth just for a quick video this morning, having watched the weekend's football and particularly that um, Spurs and Liverpool game. Um, let's get your comments on this. And again, um, not to disrespect anybody's emotions or feelings, I'm not overly interested in specific um, indications or errors made against your team and a list of things that you think have been unfair against your team. What I'm interested in is the implementation going forward and how we can get from it being too strict and pedantic one way to maybe too far the other way. And what, what can they say? What, what words can they use that are not clear and obvious that will help out these guys that, let's be honest, any human with any kind of good bone in their body has got to have some kind of sympathy, some kind of empathy for these guys who are finding it so, so hard and need a bit of help. Yes, they make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And when we make mistakes, as I always say, we can either yell at people and admonish them or try and help them. And I, for one, prefer um, when someone tries to help me rather than they yell and admonish me. So um, give me your thoughts. And if we can, I want this to be a debate about how to improve it going forward. Implementation, wording and your thoughts on that. Let's have a good one um, in the chat and not get too irked, uh, which I know a lot of people were at the weekend. Um, get involved. VAR in the comments.